left my chills going down my spine, like, where am I? Whoa! I thought I was in Argentina. But we're all sitting there singing on key, you know. You may say, I'm a dreamer. Yeah, it was so beautiful. And that was a feeling of oneness. I mean, that was a feeling that, that uh, nobody there was taking seriously this idea of, uh, of conflict. When you get into the joy and you really feel that joy in your heart, you know that you are connected with everything and everyone. And there are no barriers and there are no boundaries whatsoever. And I've gone into this really deep in my mind so that I get a lot of questions and about, you know, what about rape and murder? What about uh, Nazi Germany? Uh, what about disease and plague and all these different kind of things? And so I sit there and calmly go into people deep into the mind, be past all the errors of perception, down to what I call healed perception, a place where you see the world differently than you saw it before. Where before you saw division and separation, suddenly you see oneness, you see the whole tapestry, and the whole tapestry is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And those are good questions. I think it's important, what I've learned is it's very important to allow your mind to ask questions. Because once you allow your mind to ask the questions, you have the answers within yourself. You don't really need the gurus or priests or ministers or you don't need saints uh, to tell you how to act and how to behave. What you really need is just a transformation in your own heart. And then all your behaviors just fall as suit. You know, once you get your mind in line with your source, then, you know, it really is smooth sailing from there. So, I had this experience of oneness, and what I would say it is, is I would say it's a, it's a, it's a tiny tweak in the mind. Just like you know sometimes when you're having a bad day, and then all of a sudden something changes inside, and you change your tune, and you don't even know what happens, like divine intervention or something. It's like you're skipping along, but one minute it's, everything seems so dark. The next minute, everything seems so happy. That's a miracle. That's what I call a miracle. It, a miracle, it does take a miracle to look upon this world from a place of peace. And to be in a state of peace of mind, it takes a lot of miracles. You have to say what I would call to be consistently miracle-minded or right-minded, as the Course would say, to stay in a state of above the battleground of peace and, and joy. It takes trust. There is no way that you can seem to move through this world without trust and faith. And when I'm talking about trust, I'm talking about in your higher power within, those inner prompts that are guiding you every second of every day. It's always there for you. It's just like always gently reminding you how beautiful you are, how lovely, how perfect, how innocent. Uh, all of us have been raised with a belief system that we feel like we have to uh, strive and attain and accumulate. And in the state of mind I'm in, like I was sharing yesterday, I, I don't have any possessions. I don't uh, literally own anything. And it's not so much a form thing, but it's like giving up the idea of possession. You know, it, in relationships, in, in every interaction I do, what I, the Holy Spirit has done is He said, you have to learn to give as God gives. Give as the flower launches its fragrance up into the air for everyone to smell. Uh, let it give everything away so freely and realize that you're perfectly provided for and you will demonstrate a state of mind that is not of this world because this is a world of, of seeming scarcity, of lack, where there's bargains and agreements and lots of things that go on. And it takes a lot of faith to turn your mind around from that and say, I just want to give it all away for free and trust that it will all be provided. So that's really what Robin was sharing. That's what my last uh, 13 years have been is I've done hundreds and oh, probably thousands of, of gatherings and talks in restaurants, bookstores, backyards. Uh, here we are in the patio area. <laughs> um, I did one on a, on a beach, that was fun, uh, in an orchard, I think I was in 
an orchard called Elk, in Elk Grove here uh, near Sacramento. I, I was in an orchard and it was a hot day, about 100 degrees, and everybody was under the trees, so I had really no microphone system. I had to let the voice kind of boom through. Um, but all these gatherings have really been for me. Uh, I seem to have talked to thousands of people in lots and lots of places, but it was all about my own uh, transformation of consciousness. My own willingness to learn not to judge anymore, you know, to just accept everybody exactly as they are in the present moment. And I, the thing I really want to focus on, too, is that oneness is synonymous with the present moment. The present moment is extremely simple. And if you ever notice when you're fully present, how joyful and happy you feel. You're just happy for no worldly reason at all. You're clueless and you're happy. And that's what it means to be content in the present moment. 